Welcome to Pastor's Chat. I'd like to begin today by reading the last verses of chapter 1 of Colossians. And Paul writes to this wonderful church at Colossae, these saints, that he recognized their faith, their hope, their love, their willingness to serve the Lord, but now they had been uh, kind of uh, distracted with some false teaching, and he's trying to correct that. But he's setting the stage before he deals with that to encourage them to be mature Christians. Notice what he says in verses 24 through 29 of chapter 1. He says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, mature, in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. What wonderful verses reminding us of the ministry of the Apostle Paul to the people at Colossae. Now, I've often thought and believe as I studied the New Testament, if I come to an area or a community where there is no believers, no one that knows Christ as their Savior, they do not know who Jesus is. My first responsibility, your first responsibility, is to tell them the good news, to teach them who Jesus is, to lead them through the Scripture, to show them how God loved them so much He sent His Son Christ to die on a cross to forgive them for their sins, to bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said in Romans 1. I, I, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks, which meant everyone. That's our first responsibility. If there's no believers, to bring people to a saving faith in Jesus Christ through sharing the good news with them. Now, if there are believers in a community, believers in the family, believers around us, believers in the church that we go to, we should be working and striving, as Paul said he did, to help them grow in spiritual maturity. I've been convinced over the years, the greatest hindrance to people who are not saved coming to Christ is people that are claiming to be saved but not living like it. People saying, I'm a Christian, but there's no real evidence or proof in their daily walk. There's no Christian spiritual maturity in their life. I'm afraid there are so many people that Paul even talked about when he wrote to the church at 1 Corinthians. He said, I have to write to you as unto carnal, as to babes in Christ. You've never grown up. You've never grown up. And I am so sorry to say there are many people who claim to be Christians today who've never grown up. Now, Paul said, my task now as I work with the believers at Colossae is to help you grow up in Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I rejoice in my sufferings for you. I will suffer. I will be afflicted. I'll fill up. I'll complete the afflictions of Christ. Jesus came to planet earth. He was rejected of men. He was despised of men. He was mocked by men. And that's the sufferings we believe that Paul is referring to here in this first verse 24. The sufferings of Christ. The fact that he left the splendors and the glory of heaven, the right hand of the Father, and he came to earth and he suffered. He suffered from men, rejected of his own. When we determine that we will live for Christ, we must learn we will suffer with him. And when we suffer for him and with him, it is for fulfilling what Christ came to do. And that is to reveal to them who God really is. Oh, that's the joy. And Paul said, I rejoice in that because when I suffer for you, 
and fill up that which is behind to the afflictions of Christ. And you get to see Jesus living in me and through me and those who are true believers. You will grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And you know what happens? Others are willing to suffer and live for Christ and bring more people to Jesus Christ. Paul said, I was made a minister according to the stewardship of from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the Word of God. God's given us a stewardship. I pray you and I'll fulfill it today, and may God's grace be upon us to do that. God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.